So we're at Ararat in Victoria, and it's October, getting on for harvest time. And there's this. A crop of canola, that's right, canola, only two weeks in the ground at two leaf stage. Now, before you take to Twitter with 140 well-chosen characters of sarcasm, check this out. Same farm as before filmed the same day. That's more like it. But guess what? This canola went in the ground back in October last year. What's happening? Well, firstly, green feed for sheep through summer round here is sometimes in short supply, so it's not uncommon to plant forage rape to carry through that gap. That would be the general practice in, in this district, planting a, a forage, forage crop that you grow for maybe four or five months and then, and then knock, it, knock it down, clean it out and, and go back in with a cereal or something like that. Only this time on the Brady family's farm, they've planted canola as the forage, not forage rape, and left it in after the grazing's done to double as the grain crop. No spraying out, no replanting, one crop to do the lot. So this canola crop was sown on the 11th of October in 2013. Then at the 1st of December, 450 lambs were placed in here for grazing at a stocking rate of 18.75 to the hectare. And then at the 31st of January 2014, the first lot of 200 were taken out and sold for an average of $101 a head. Two weeks later, on the 14th of February, the following 250 were taken off and sold for an average of $103 a head. From that point, this crop has been treated as a, a normal canola crop. Well, that was the plan, but after a decent rain, they put another 1,000 lambs back on for two weeks in April. Bonus! Couldn't have done that if they'd just sown it to a new crop. Is this just any old canola variety? Well, no. It's a, what they call a winter type canola that uh, has come in from Europe and because of the vernalisation requirement it needs to go through before it'll go to reproductive, it, it stays vegetative for a long time which allows us to, to graze it um, in, in place of a forage rape crop. The production from the forage side of things has, has been really comparable, we've been really happy with it. But how does it compare with a proper canola crop this end of the season? Well, like the one next to it, for instance. Well, there's visibly more biomass, but only harvest will tell on yield. And with a full year behind it, it's not in a hurry. Despite their age difference, the conventional canola is about two weeks ahead. I probably think at this point they're, they're going to they're gonna yield very similar. Um, and we're probably hoping for an average yield for this area would be we'd work on two and a half tonnes to the hectare, and hopefully both will do that. Southern Farming Systems has been trialling spring-sown canola since 2011, and it was seeing that research at their field days that prompted the Bradys to try it for themselves. They're designed to be sown, you know, early in the season, so sort of end of Feb, March, on a rain. This work is, is part of Grain and Graze 2, uh, which is a GRDC-funded project and we ended up getting about four tonne of feed over the summer and between two and three tonne of, uh, of grain. So it delivers, but there were a couple of surprises, good ones. Firstly, how it sidestepped pests, especially slugs. The slug story is the biggest selling point, I think. This spring sown stuff that was grazed was actually seedling stage back in November uh, when the pests weren't that active. So. Uh, over summer it cabbaged up, we grazed that and then it grew back as uh, cabbage. The slugs weren't interested in it because it was an older plant. The other surprise is beneath the ground. Here's the root system of a year old spring sown plant and here's one sown in autumn this year, less than 10 metres away. The last three years it's been quite dry over the summer months and it's the plant wants to survive, so it's putting roots down deep. So I, I really think actually making the plant work for a living is, is, is what's giving us that, that advantage and, and that, that strong plant all the way through the year then. Main cautions? Well, as with most brassicas, there's a need to monitor nitrates to ensure safe grazing and watch withholding periods for livestock if you spray. For thirty dollars or whatever a feed test is, you know, sending it off for a, a quick nitrate test before 
stocker going back in is, you know, it's worth it. It has to be safe to graze before you put animals on there. So um, we've, we've been monitoring nitrate levels before we're grazing and they've never been higher than 100 milligrams. Um, so yeah, not, not up near that danger zone of 1,000 um, ever. This area is what passes as the high rainfall zone in Australian grain growing, annual average just shy of 600 mils. It's not Walgett or Wild Catchem or the Mallee. The importance of a, a controlling your summer weeds in, say, the Mallee and Wimmera, you know, every mill of, of rainfall that you can conserve contributes to your winter crop yield. And it's just not the case for us, and it's almost the opposite. We're, we're a niche environment here, and uh, where this fits is going to be dependent on, you know, how much water is in the profile and, and what sort of topping up they're getting through the season. Without having seen that work done, we may not have taken the risk of, of trying this, but we saw it work with some real success through that research and, and decided we'd have a go at it. It really fits well into our system and really works well for our entire cropping and grazing focus. Long season cereals also have the vernalisation characteristic that makes this all possible. So obvious question, would it work for wheat? you'll be amazed at the answer.